I'm Miss Mary from the YMCA, and I'm very excited to be with you today. Today we're going to be reading the story called Yum, Mmm, Que Rico, America's Sproutings, a haiku by Pat Mora, pictures by Rafael Lopez. Today's story is brought to us by the Healthy Schools, Healthy Communities curriculum developed by the Michigan Fitness Foundation. Let's take a minute to take a peek at our cover. And using the title and the pictures you see, do you have any predictions? What, are, what do you think our story is gonna be about today? What's gonna happen? What kind of healthy things are they gonna teach us, do you think? Take a minute to think about your prediction or guess. What do you think the difference is between a fruit and vegetable? If you had to tell someone the difference between the two, what would you say? Typically, fruits have seeds inside them and vegetables do not. That's the main difference between the two. What are some examples of whole grain foods that you like to eat or that you could eat? Can you think of any? I like brown rice or whole wheat bread. I love popcorn and rice cakes. And we love to have oatmeal for breakfast at our house. Why is it important to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, whole grains and low fat or non-fat dairy foods? I brought with me my, my plate. So why is it important to eat a variety of these foods? They give us different vitamins and minerals and fiber and other important nutrients for our health. So we want to make sure we're eating all the food groups and all different colors every day. Well, let's listen to our story and let's find out what is it going to be about and what kind of healthy foods could we eat. Yum! Mmm! Que rico! America's Sproutings. Haiku by Pat Mora. Pictures by Rafael Lopez. Blueberry. Fill your mouth with blue. Share a bowl heaped with summer. Chew indigo. Oh. Blueberries are delicious, healthy treats. Originating in North America, they were eaten fresh and dried by Native Americans. They also ground blueberries into spice rubs and used the berries in medicines. European settlers in North America made gray paint by boiling blueberries in milk. And today the United States is the largest producer of blueberries in the world. Wild blueberries, the official state berry of Maine, are sometimes harvested using traditional handheld rakes. Plan a blueberry party in July, National Blueberry Month. Chocolate, fudge, cake, pie, cookies, brown magic melts on your tongue. Happy, your eyes dance. Chocolate is native to Central or South America. Although the exact origin of this popular food is often debated, chocolate is made from the seeds of the pods of the tropical cocoa tree. The word chocolate comes from the Nahutl word nzokolate, which means bitter water. The Aztecs roasted cocoa seeds, ground them, and mixed them with water and seasonings to make a spicy drink. The pods were so highly prized, they were even used as money. Yes, money grew on trees. Corn, leaf sprout, silk snug house, smell grits, tortillas, cornbread. Pass the butter, please. Corn, also called maize, is a member of the cereal family. Its ancient ancestor is the wild Mexican grass called teosinte, which means God's corn. This wild corn was eventually domesticated and became a staple of the many people's diets. Pueblo Indians of the southwestern United States planted corn of various colors, including blue, and corn is still offered in blessings at traditional Native American ceremonies. Today, the starch from corn kernels 
is used as a binder to help crayons and chalk hold together. Cranberry. Marsh floating hard bead summers then pops in hot pot. Scarlet fireworks. Cranberries are tart fall fruits. They may be native to Wisconsin, where about half of the United States crop grows on woody trailing vines and sandy marshes or bogs. The berries were used by Native Americans for food, dyes, and medicines. Some say they were called cranberries because cranes liked to slosh through the bogs looking for a bright red snack. Others say they were called cranberries because their pink spring flowers look like crane's head. These fruits were also called bear berries and bounce berries. Can you guess why? Papaya. Chewing your perfume, we taste your leafy jungle. Yum! Juicy tropics. Papaya, also known as tree melons, are believed to have originated in South Mexico and Central America. Now they are grown throughout the tropical and subtropical areas of the world. Papayas are hollow with small wrinkled black seeds in the center. Papain, found in the milky fluid of unripe papayas, is used in several products including meat tenderizers and some medicines. When ripe, the fruit is juicy and sweet. Shaped somewhat like a pear, a papaya can weigh as much as 20 pounds. Peanut. Smear nutty butter, then jelly. Gooey party. My sandwich and me. Peanuts, or ground nuts, are from South America, possibly Peru or Brazil. Peanuts are not really nuts. Like beans and peas, they are legumes, plants that absorb nitrogen and enrich the soil. African-American botanist and inventor George Washington Carver developed more than 300 uses for peanuts. In the United States, 600 million pounds of peanuts and 700 million pounds of peanut butter are eaten each year. In March, National Peanut Month, enjoy nibbling peanuts mixed with dried fruits. Pecan, we crack hard brown shells, family munching, story time, crunchy taste for fall. Pecans grow on large trees native to Texas and northern Mexico. The pecan is the state tree of Texas, and there are almost a million acres of pecan trees along the state's rivers and streams. French settlers in North America named this tasty nut pecan, which means nut to be cracked with a rock. The nuts were originally harvested by throwing sticks into the trees to knock the nuts to the ground. Pecan pie is a traditional southern U.S. dessert. Pineapple, a stiff, spiky hat on thick, prickly skin inside high syrupy rings. Pineapple is a tropical fruit that originated in Paraguay in southern Brazil. Today it is the leading fruit crop of Puerto Rico, although Hawaiian pineapples are also prized for their delicious flavor. Pineapples are bromelades. They have stiff, overlapping, waxy leaves that catch and hold water, called piña, in Spanish which means pine cone. The pineapple has skin that indeed resembles a very large pine cone. Hotels and inns sometimes decorate with pineapple shapes because this fruit is a symbol of hospitality. Potato, underground magic, peel brown bundle, mash pile high. Salt and pepper clouds. Potatoes are native to the Andean mountains of Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador in South America. The Amara Indians of Bolivia develop more than 200 varieties of potatoes, and the Indians of Peru have more than 200 names for their varieties, known as papas in Spanish. Potatoes are the world's fourth food staple after wheat, corn, and rice. Potatoes are nutritious and can be red, purple, pink, yellow, and even striped. 
1995, potatoes became the first vegetable grown in outer space. Prickly pear. Red dessert wonder. Cactus fruit becomes syrup in dulces. Surprise! Prickly pear cactus may have come from Mexico, although their exact origin is unknown. Native Americans of the southwestern United States ate raw, cooked, and dried prickly pears. The freshly green pads, known as nepales in Spanish, are modified stems or branches, not leaves. They can be served as a vegetable, like green beans. Once the needles and skin are carefully removed and the pads sliced, the red fruits, called tunas in Spanish, are tricky to harvest. They are used to make juice, jams, and candy. Tomato. Round roly-poly squirts seedy, juicy splatter. Red bursts in your mouth. Tomatoes probably originated in Peru or Mexico. They are eaten as a vegetable, but they are technically fruits. In 1893, the United States Supreme Court ruled that since tomatoes were commonly used as a vegetable, they should be subject to the government's tax on imported vegetables. Once considered poisonous, tomatoes are now one of the world's most prized foods. They come in many colors, including red, yellow, orange, green, purple, and white. Can you imagine pizza without tomato sauce or tacos without tomato salsa? The end. Very good job listening today. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I do. What were some of the fruits or vegetables or healthy foods you heard in our story today? Did you notice all the different colors and the varieties of different food groups in our story? Hopefully, you got some different ideas of different foods to dare to try. Awesome job listening today. Thank you so much for having me, and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.